Good day, my name is Mina Mike TRX, and uh, today uh, I'd like to talk about the Omni Wing and more specifically uh, just about some aerodynamic principles. Some of you probably uh, enjoy folding the Omni Wing and uh, may have an uh, interest in uh, gaining a little bit better understanding about uh, the aerodynamics of the wing, why it flies. Uh, now, up front, I'm going to let you know that I have no formal training in uh, aerodynamics uh, or uh, aircraft design. Uh, I have been uh, involved with uh, sport aviation with hang gliding, ultralight flying uh, for most of my life and of course been folding the paper airplanes uh, for uh, most of my life since the early 70s. So uh, let's go forward with uh, uh, aircraft uh, design 101. So, uh, since uh, we are talking about the Omni Wing, I'll show you the basic uh, Omni Wing. And you can see this, uh, how to fold this on my channel. And also see it fly in flight on my channel. And uh, uh, what we have here is what's referred to as a flying wing. The, the flying wing is uh, uh, an aircraft uh, that you would, uh, let's say, relate to uh, hang gliding or the B-2 bomber is an excellent example of the flying wing. In fact, I got one right there, but with some of these wingtip things added on just for fun. Uh, uh, so, uh, so uh, then, you know, if you want to look up uh, some of the Northrop uh, projects in the uh, 1940s and 50s, uh, the flying wing projects that they were doing, and you'll see where the inspiration for uh, finally the uh, uh, B-2 bomber uh, came from. So uh, they're uh, very good flying aircraft. They can be very stable, and they eliminate some of the problems of trying to build a an aircraft uh, with fuselage, elevator, uh, stabilizer. All those things serve a function, uh, but they can also create uh, uh, a lot of parasitic drag and what parasitic drag is whenever uh, an aircraft flies through the air air is moving alongside every surface and so the more surfaces you have out there that aren't there to create lift the more of this drag it experiences so with the hang glider what they've done is they've gotten rid of the fuselage uh, usually you'll see no uh, uh, elevator or rudder and so it's truly just a wing that's devoted to creating lift with the airfoil. Comparing a flying wing to a traditional wing I went ahead and I built up a little crude uh, uh, traditional aircraft that you got the fuselage you stuff all the people in there uh, hang a couple engines on it this of course is just a glider and it actually flies fairly poorly, <clears throat> but uh, if, uh, at some time I might make some effort to really refine this. It, it was a, actually a fun little project. But this is just to show the difference uh, between uh, um, traditional aircraft and a flying wing. Traditional aircraft, uh, you got your main wing that is for creating uh, the lift and then you stick an engine or some weight or your pilots up here in the front and that causes a an effect that you know it, it wants to follow gravity so it's going to start diving well that's not a good thing because <laughs> eventually it's going to hit the ground so what you want to do is counterbalance that with another surface back here be somewhat behind the wing and here's the wing level with the fuselage, but this elevator is at a steeper angle than uh, the wing. And so what it does is it counter counterbalances this uh, diving effect at the, the wing because of the weight, because of the shape of the airfoil, with uh, a, a counter effect back here. And then, of course, you've got your, uh, L, uh, your uh, rudder for assisting in control as well as uh, I've put in the little flaps here for ailerons. 
so that's your basic aircraft there. So how do I get away with, or how does any flying wing get away with not having fuselage, without not having a rudder, without having uh, an elevator? Um, the rudder is there just for stability. But I can design the stability into this wing as far as that it'll fly true and straight. And that's what the rudder's there for is, you know, kind of, kind of always constantly correcting because uh, when you're in the air, air is always moving. Wing will get tilted a little bit. You correct it with the uh, elevator's wing will yaw a little bit. You correct it with the rudder, uh, your rudder. And uh, of course, there's no moving surfaces on a paper airplane. They're all just rigid. So what you're hoping for is just to achieve a good, stable glide path and uh, with good performance. So I've got the, the wing, I've got an airfoil, and the natural tendency with all this weight that I've built in here is for the wing just to dive. But to counterbalance that, I went ahead and I've designed in a good amount of twist into this wing. And this is what uh, hang gliders do. This is what the, uh, the B-2 bomber would have designed into it. And any flying wing, and almost all aircraft, have some amount of twist. A flying wing is going to have more twist because it's not only providing a little uh, tip stability for uh, when you come in to land slowly, but it's also uh, serving the same function as the elevator back here. So I've got the majority part of the wing at a certain angle and then out at the wingtips and I've created this nice twist that I tape into position which sets this area of the wing at a steeper incidence. And since this area of the wing is behind the center of gravity just in the same way that this elevator is behind the rest of the wing or the center of gravity, it creates a counterbalance to what this wing wants to do because of the weight, because of the airfoil, it would want to dive in. I counterbalance that with the twist in the wing. So it's a very uh, functional and important part of this, uh, of this design. And if you fail in getting that twist in there, sometimes you can just kind of ugly, uh, what I've done here is to give a demonstration, I was you know, using a fingernail to add some reflex. So sometimes if I build a wing, it's flying a little bit too fast or it's got a turn, I can do all kinds of uh, manipulation of the trailing edge out here to uh, correct for that. Um, so overall that's kind of the basics of uh, you know why this wing flies. Uh, the Another very important part of this wing is especially when I get into like the advanced uh, Omni wing. I use a larger uh, a format for that aircraft and as you can see I, I start you know I've, I've used quite a bit of material here several sheets of paper to build this airfoil up and really develop a, uh, a more refined and defined uh, airfoil uh, to create lift and uh, really get some extraordinary uh, performance out of a, a, an advanced Omni wing. And this one, not too much effort into it, uh, probably three or four sheets of uh, paper involved. Uh, some of that I've used for in competition, uh, upwards to eight sheets of paper on a plan form this same size. And it's all to build up this airfoil and uh, strengthen it. And they fly extremely fast with an a, a un, unbelievable uh, good uh, glide ratio. So, uh, uh, you know, if you have some questions about uh, some of the terminologies I've used, uh, if I've used some uh, terminologies that are maybe a little off, you know, for those that are more uh, aerodynamic uh, learned than I, you know, be easy on me. I'm just a, a guy out here folding paper airplanes, flying hang gliders, and picking up uh, a little bit of knowledge uh, about uh, flight and aerodynamics and aircraft design along the way, no formal training. Um, so I uh, hope you've uh, enjoyed this, uh, get some benefit uh, from the uh, little Aerodynamics 101 and an understanding as to why the Omni wing flies the way it does. 
Y'all have a good day and have fun flying.